Number 10, dinosaur. When it comes to big things, dinosaurs were pretty damn big. Scientists were able to uncover the fossilized remains of a new and unknown species of dinosaur underneath the ice sheets in Greenland. When the dinosaurs were alive, the earth was a lot warmer and more tropical, these fossils becoming trapped under the ice when the climate changed into the ice age. The skull they found is thought to be a two-legged plant-eating dinosaur of medium size, and they dubbed the new species Issy Sinek. The dinosaur is believed to have grown to the size of 10 to 30 feet, and the skull they found is thought to be that of a younger dinosaur that had not fully grown yet. They used computer technology to create 3D scans of the head before sending the specimens to the Natural History Museum in Denmark as they have sovereignty over the country of Greenland. It is the first known dinosaur to have been native to Greenland and is thought to come from the late Triassic period around 200 million years ago. Number 9. Bison The massive carcass of a bison known as a steppe bison was found by a gold mining family in Alaska way back in 1979. They were using a mining hose and were melting a frozen block of ice, effectively thawing out the creature that had become trapped inside. The bison species is from the Ice Age and the body that they found is thought to be tens of thousands of years old. Once they were finally able to fully excavate the body, they found other things alongside it, including hair, insects, wood, and different plants. When the pelt of the animal reacted to the soil around it, it turned the body blue, and so the bison ended up being dubbed Blue Babe. Analysis of the body showed it had died 36,000 years ago, a result of being attacked by an Ice Age lion. The ice allowed the creature to be incredibly well preserved, scientists even being able to find pockets of blood in the body. Number 8. Cave Bear This specimen found on an island in the Arctic was a very unique discovery, said to be one of the first of its kind. Researchers found a well-preserved body of a cave bear that was around 40,000 years old. Cave bears would grow to be around 7 feet long and typically weighed over 1,000 pounds in their adulthood. Before this discovery was made, they only knew about the animal from skulls and bones and had never found a specimen that was this fully preserved. The body that they found had all of its organs still and even still had its nose on its face, paired with its terrifyingly massive sharp teeth. According to one of Russia's leading Ice Age experts, the discovery of the body was of world importance and is the first and only find of its kind. The body was found by a group of reindeer herders on the island and was then sent around to various scientists to study the life of the animal. Number 7. Horned Lark Alright, some of these creatures aren't that big, but they're still pretty interesting, and size doesn't matter anyways. In 2018, fossil hunters were in the northeastern part of Siberia, known as the Pole of Cold, and they were tunneling into the permafrost. Deep underground, they discovered the body of a bird thought to be around 46,000 years old, but it was incredibly well preserved and scientists say that it looks like it could have only died a few days ago. Researchers believe that it is the ancestor of the horned lark bird and is the first of its kind to have ever been discovered. It is also said to be one of the best preserved specimens ever discovered as it was almost completely intact and still had all of its parts. The ice age that took place is thought to have generated many new species who adapted, and this is one of them. Siberia is home to a lot of frozen discoveries due to its freezing cold temperatures, and who knows what else is sitting in the ice, just waiting to be found. Number 6. Wolf the Pleistocene era, or Ice Age, lasted from about 2 million to 11,000 years ago, and many great extinct creatures we've discovered come from this era. One of these discoveries was the head of a massive Ice Age era wolf that was still snarling 40,000 years after it had died. It was found in a cold region of Russia and is one of the first full-sized frozen wolves ever to be discovered. They found it in the summer of 2018 and it was described as having mammoth-like fur, sharp fangs, and was between the ages of 2 and 4 when it passed away. Because only the head was discovered, it only gave small clues towards the evolution of wolves and how they have changed and adapted over the years, but researchers were still able to reconstruct the head using 3D models and get a solid understanding of what these Ice Age wolves looked like. In fact, the specimen was so well preserved that it even still had parts of its brain. 
Number five, lion cubs. As I've mentioned before, Siberia is a place that is fairly popular for finding frozen specimens, and this time they didn't just find one animal, but instead two matching ones. They found two mummified cave lions that lived during the Ice Age around 30,000 years ago, giving them the names Sparta and Boris. They were found in 2017 and 2018 by mammoth tusk collectors, and one of the cubs was believed at the time to be the best preserved Ice Age animal ever found. It was originally thought that the two cubs they discovered were siblings, being only a few months old at the time of their death, but research showed that Boris had actually died about 15,000 years before Sparta. Sparta still had her fur, teeth, skin, organs, and even her whiskers, looking like she may have only recently died despite being a part of a species that went extinct over 10,000 years ago. If given the chance to grow up, the cubs would have managed to grow to 5 feet long and weigh almost 1,000 pounds. Number 4. Sharks Creatures that are found frozen in ice don't always actually come from the Ice Age. There are plenty of cold places right now where animals can unfortunately become trapped, or pass away and then freeze. In Cape Cod, Massachusetts, it has become startlingly common for giant sharks to become frozen in the ice off the coast. A few years ago, they found a total of four different sharks that had all become frozen in the ice and passed away. The sharks were apparently becoming trapped in shallow waters during changing weather conditions, and sudden cold snaps would cause them to freeze and die. The thresher sharks that were commonly becoming trapped were apparently not a very well studied species, so the bodies that were found were taken and thawed in order to be dissected and researched. The Atlantic White Shark Conservancy even went so far to refer to the specimens as sharksicles, but probably not something you'd want to eat on a hot day in the summer. Number 3. Mummies Human remains are usually found when archaeologists dig up large graves and find skeletons, but in a rare case they managed to find the well-preserved and mummified body of a woman. A group of hikers exploring an Argentinian volcano found the body of a woman who appeared to have died around 500 years ago. The body was well preserved due to the incredibly high and cold elevation at which it was found. It's believed that the body was there as part of an ancient sacrificial ritual, and the woman, named the Inca Ice Maiden, was sacrificed. She was given lots of food and drink before being led up the volcano where she was left to die of exposure. The discovery of her body was also incredibly important because from samples they took, they were able to discover that she was fighting tuberculosis, and these sorts of samples can help us work towards fighting these diseases in the modern day. Number 2. Foal In the summer of 2018, they found what they called the best preserved ice age animal ever found. Feels like they say that a lot. Anyways, mammoth tusk hunters in Siberia found the body of an around 42,000 year old horse foal, incredibly well preserved thanks to the cold temperatures. They say that it was only about two weeks old at the time of its death, and they were able to extract both blood and urine samples from it. The discovery apparently pushed scientists closer to the hope that they could bring these extinct creatures like mammoths back to life. I think we should listen to Jurassic Park's warnings and just deal with the animals we actually have right now. I know you might be thinking that a baby horse isn't some terrifying giant ice age creature, but full grown horses are pretty big, okay, and they're actually kind of terrifying. I mean they basically walk on one giant finger. It's creepy and I don't like it. Number 1. Baby Mammoth during the Ice Age, mammoths were one of the biggest creatures around, basically being massive furry elephants. This young woolly mammoth specimen was found in, you guessed it, Siberia. This incredibly well preserved body of a young female woolly mammoth named Yuka is said to have lived around 28,000 years ago and they were discovered around a decade ago. Due to her good condition, scientists were eager to conduct experiments, and one of those was taking cells from her body. When they put the cells together, they found that they were still active, even almost 30,000 years later, so they managed to technically revive Yuka in a way. At full size, woolly mammoths were usually around 13. 15 feet tall and would weigh around 13,000 pounds, or the same as around 26,000 large oranges if that helps you picture it. In our number 10 spot we have a frozen alien corpse. Scientists have discovered this frozen alien corpse in Russia. It was found by two people in Siberia.
Nigeria after claims of a UFO came to Earth. Allegedly, it was missed by the Russian military after they cleaned up the area after the crash. The corpse was pretty damaged, but the being was two feet high and part of his right leg was missing. Also, apparently, this particular area in Russia is a hot spot for UFO sightings, and there are a number of reports of sightings every single year. In fact, there was a sighting that reported seeing a UFO crash in the area, and so the finding of this alien corpse aligns with that sighting. Whoa, I want to go to Siberia now. If there is anyone watching from Russia, you know, from Siberia, please tell us of any other sightings that you may have come across in the comment section below. In a number nine spot, we have traces of potential alien DNA. Scientists have recently discovered traces of DNA outside some of the Antarctic caves, which could suggest alien life. From algae DNA to small animals, there was so much evidence to support the idea that perhaps there once was a lot more living species in Antarctica. They did not come across any animals in the caves at the time, but they still found this to be a great discovery and have reason to believe that they will discover more evidence as they continue their search, or perhaps alien life might be underneath the ice sheets as there are warm temperatures coming from underneath the sheets. And that would suggest that it might be a place they could easily live in. In our number eight spot, we have UFO discovered. That's right, in October of 2020, satellite photos of Antarctica were taken that had many people stop in their tracks. Surrounded by ice and snow and with some ice still on it, we see an object that looks like half of a flying saucer that is also a bit raised, casting a shadow around it. As the ice sheets continue to melt around the world, it is believed that is why it has now been revealed, and it is also believed that this is potentially an aircraft from thousands if not millions of years ago. According to experts, Antarctica would be a great place for aliens to go to because of how sterile it is, so it would make sense to land there. Of course, this is all speculation and there's nothing further on this discovery at this time. In our number seven spot, we have the Alaskan alien. On January 3rd, 1989, NASA's Alaska York Station made a great discovery. They found an alien frozen in ice. Yep, an alien, just like you see in the movies with the great big eyes and bald head. Makes you wonder if perhaps the movies are showcasing these creatures the same because we've already discovered aliens and someone somewhere is telling illustrators to paint them a specific way. I wish I was someone that had pulled to know all of this top secret information, although I guess if I was, then I wouldn't be able to make this video as I would probably have a target on my back. There is no other information on this discovery as it is considered top secret, but it is definitely a sign that alien life has been to this planet. In our number six spot, we have alien eggs. In 2015, it was reported that two friends were walking along a frozen lake in Utah when they discovered the most peculiar thing. There was a strange formation in the middle of the lake that honestly gives me shivers to look at. If you are someone that feels uncomfortable looking at a bunch of dots together or eyeballs looking at you, definitely look away. This has the same sort of displeasing effect. Small holes were seen poking out from the ice with a strange formation lying underneath them. The theories around what this is include a UFO landing spot, something that aliens left when they visited Earth, and the popular theory is alien eggs. There were some things there that were slimy, so the two friends left them, and that's why people believe them to be eggs. What do you think this is? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number five spot, we have unknown frozen creatures. More frozen creatures in Siberia, you say? Yep, clearly this is an alien breeding ground of some sort. Strange creatures were recently found throughout Siberia. Many of these unknown creatures were found deceased and frozen in huge blocks of ice. There are creatures that have never been discovered, which are believed to be alien, and even a species of dog was discovered that is so old it goes back to 1000 AD. Wow, well, I guess we're all going to have to plan our trip to Siberia, eh? I've always wanted to go on an alien expedition, so this is definitely where I will be going next. In our number four spot, we have Frozen on Mars. Okay, this one is like a little bit of a stretch as this evidence was not found frozen on this planet, but it is evidence of alien life and it was found on Mars and Mars can get to a temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius, which is way past freezing. So whatever, imagine that this evidence was found frozen as it could very well have been. I just can't prove that and I wanted to share this anyway. 
1976, the Viking Mars landers detected chemical signatures that indicated potential past life on the planet. Or perhaps present life. Eh? An experiment mixing soil with radioactive carbon labeled nutrients tested positive. And even though other tests done at the time did not test positive, the original scientists and others that have reanalyzed the data still stand by the original finding there is definitely a possibility of alien life on Mars. In our number three spot, we have aliens in the water. In an interview in 2017, ex NASA scientist Alan Stern spoke about the theory of alien life underwater frozen. He mentions that aliens are bound to exist and that scientists should focus more on water worlds. When he was asked about why aliens haven't been found to date, he was quoted as saying that there are many possible explanations. The great majority of worlds with biology and civilizations are water ocean worlds. ETs at the bottom of ocean worlds would be protected from the likes of deadly radiation from space if their planet does not have a protective atmosphere like it does here on Earth and exploding stars. He went on to speak about how ocean worlds are usually freezing cold and that these aliens would be living beneath a thick sheet of ice and that is what would make it impossible to contact them. Fascinating. I could totally see this to be true as there's so much of the ocean that we haven't even begun to explore yet. In our number two spot we have alien fossils from Antarctica. Whoa, this is a wild one. In 1996, NASA scientists announced that they came upon a meteorite that appeared to be from Mars. A fossilized microbe in a potato shaped lump of Martian rock was how it was described. It is believed that the meteorite was possibly from Mars and blasted off in a collision and wandered the solar system for, you know, approximately 15 million years before coming to Earth and freezing for a little while in Antarctica. After further analysis of the rock, it apparently contained organic molecules and tiny specks of mineral magnetite as well as nanobacteria. There is much debate about whether this fully indicates alien life, but a lot of scientists believe that it does. In our number one spot, we have a frozen ancient civilization. In 2017, there was a whistleblower by the name of Cory Goad who claimed that it was discovered that an ancient alien civilization is frozen and buried under two miles of ice in Antarctica. Apparently, this discovery was made in 1939 by a German expedition, but it was only until 2002 that archaeologists and scientists were allowed on the site. Apparently, Goad originally only knew about this secret expedition because of a USAF officer working in the program, but eventually Goad himself journeyed to Antarctica with the US Air Force to witness this secret project where they have discovered the ruins of a 55,000 year old alien civilization. Not much more was revealed, but hopefully in the next 10 years we will learn more about these findings. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the zombie virus. Fear began to spread after a 48,000 year old virus was found in Siberian permafrost. The revived virus, which has been given the name Pandora virus Yadoma, was extracted from the ice by scientists with the French National Center for Scientific Research who warned that there could be more just like this one or even worse that are waiting to be unleashed on the world as ice that has been frozen for thousands of years melts all over the world. The lead microbiologist on the study, Jean-Marie Olympic, warned that there has been limited research so far into these live viruses that are starting to be seen all over the globe. This particular virus was found underneath a lake and while it only infects amoebas at this point in time, some people fear that it could mutate in a way that would make it then become infectious to humans. The study warns that there have been people in claims that quote wrongly suggest that such occurrences are rare and that zombie viruses are not a public health threat. While it doesn't appear as if there's anything to worry about at this point, it's always good to stay informed. In our number nine spot today, we have the glacier virus. Back in 2015, researchers retrieved glacial ice that came from more than 6,700 meters above sea level at the Galia ice cap in western China. The ice samples were taken for a study, and just recently, the findings have been published. The lead author of this study, Zi Ping Zong, said of the findings, quote, These glaciers were formed gradually, and along with dust and gases, many, many viruses were also deposited 
deposited in that ice. As it turns out, inside of the ice, researchers found dozens of viruses that had never before been seen by humans. Their research was said to find genetic coding for 33 different viruses, at least 28 of which had never previously been found, and some of the viruses date as far back as 14,500 years. Those who found these viruses will continue doing research on them in order to know more about what they are, who they can infect, and see how they may be able to inform our knowledge on the viruses that we currently see in our modern world. In our number 8 spot today we have the 1918 influenza. In 1951, scientist Johann Holten tried to isolate the 1918 influenza virus from people who had passed away from it and been buried in the Alaskan permafrost in a town called Brevik Mission. During the time when the virus was active, 72 out of the 80 residents of the town fell victim to it and died. Although Johann was able to unearth the bodies, he was unable to find any live viruses. 50 years later, however, he would get a second crack at it. In July of 1997, he read an article that had been published in the journal Science that was written by a virologist by the name of Jeffrey Taubenberger. This article was the initial genetic sequence of the 1918 flu virus, and when Johann saw this, he offered his help in the research once again. He returned to Brevik Mission and got permission again to dig up the victims of this flu virus. This time, he found a person who he called Lucy. Lucy was a victim of the flu, and when she passed away, she was roughly 30 years old and was obese. The only reason I mention that is because it was important in how she helped the research. The fat actually worked to protect her lungs from decay, which allowed Johan to take both of them, and inside, there was enough material to sequence the complete virus multiple times over. This allowed scientists everywhere some of the most valuable insight into the virus that anyone could have asked for, and allowed us to learn that the virus originated from birds before mutating to infect humans. In our number 7 spot today we have the anthrax outbreak. Anthrax is not a new virus to the world, but recently, in a remote corner of the Siberian tundra, it has been rearing its ugly head once again. In 2016, in the Yamal Peninsula, which is located in the Arctic Circle, a a group of people had to be hospitalized and some even lost their lives as a result of an anthrax breakout. Scientists have explained that this breakout was caused by the thawing of the ground. The average temperature in Russia has increased 0.43 degrees Celsius in the last 10 years, but in some of the more northern regions, the rise has been more pronounced and it has resulted in more thawing of the permafrost soil that covers Russia, which includes cemeteries and animal burial grounds. Anthrax spores can survive frozen in human and animal remains for hundreds of years, and as they thaw, they can be released back into the world in a multitude of ways. Humans weren't the only ones affected by this outbreak, as it is said that more than 2,300 reindeer also died as a result of the virus. In our number 6 spot today, we have Pithovirus Sibiricum. This is one of the two viruses that we'll be talking about today that were discovered by Chantal Abergel and Jean-Michel Clavery of Aix-Marseille University. The pair found the virus in a 30 30,000 year old sample of Siberian permafrost that was buried 30 meters or 100 feet below the surface of late Pleistocene sediment. The discovery was realized when the collected samples were exposed to amoebas, which then started to die. When examined to see why this was happening, they were found to contain giant virus specimens. Like many of the viruses on this list at this point, the virus isn't a threat to humans, but its viability after being frozen for this long raises concerns for some about climate change and drilling operations that could potentially release more frozen viruses that are deadly to humans into our world. In our number 5 spot today we have Molly virus. Part 2 of the viruses discovered by Chantel and Jean-Michel, this virus was found in that same 30,000 year old chunk of Siberian permafrost. Its discovery actually marked the fourth ancient virus found frozen in permafrost since 2003 and it was quite a remarkable discovery. This spherical DNA virus wasn't just any old virus. The 30,000 year old virus was found to have a special way of hijacking its host's machinery in order to actively replicate itself, even after all of these years being frozen in the ground. Many people refer to this virus as a behemoth due to the size of it. Scientists have warned that having two viruses that retained their infectivity being found in the same prehistoric permafrost layer is definitely a cause for concern. In our number 
4 spot today we have ocean problems. As the climate of our earth changes and ice melts, an unforeseen consequence is now being unleashed on mammals in the northern Pacific Ocean. Throughout the course of 15 years, researchers have found two new channels that link the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans between Russia and Alaska. This has caused some of the animals that live here to be interacting for the first time ever, and with this interaction comes the spread of a deadly pathogen called Focine Distemper Virus. The virus had been seen before. In fact, it was first identified in European harbor seals when it killed thousands of them in 1988. It was seen again in 2002 and in 2004, but that time it was seen in northern sea otters in Alaska, which surprised researchers everywhere. This meant it had not only jumped species, but also oceans, which is what led to the study being done on how the melting ice is likely the culprit. Study author Tracy Goldstein, associate director of One Health Institute at UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, explained that, quote, animal health and human health and environmental health are so linked. If one deteriorates, then the rest do too. While the virus hasn't yet been seen to infect humans, it does affect those who live and hunt in the area and rely on these sorts of things. In our number three spot today, we have the Alpine Project. This one is a little bit different than some of the others on this list because we are talking about one of the first ever projects that currently aims to study microscopic forms of life in the permafrost in the Alps, the Arctic, and the Antarctic. The project is led by Beat Frey of the Swiss Federal Institute for Forest, Snow, and Landscape Research. Of the research so far, Frey says, quote, We found that these organisms have a particular metabolism and cellular structure, which can be active at low temperatures. He continues on to say, quote, However, most of them are asleep. The big question is, what happens when they wake up due to climate change, for example? That is definitely the question this project is aiming to answer. While many scientists have expressed their concerns over the melting ice and what it could unleash, Frey shares these same worries, but also has some positive outlooks as well. He has said, quote, In the alpine permafrost, we have found bacteria, mushrooms, yeast, and viruses. Around half of them also exist elsewhere in the world. One third are unknown. While the unknown can be terrifying, it also opens us up to the potential that not all of the microorganisms found in the ice will be harmful. They're hoping to find some species that also might be helpful or provide us a certain use, like in the medical or biotech fields. Frey said, quote, We could use the properties of certain enzymes that are active at a low temperature. Bacteria found in permafrost could also prove important for gauging the resistance of antibiotics. It's just nice to have someone looking for the positives in this scenario that is pretty frightening to a lot of people. In our number two spot today, we have the 8 million year old ice. Back in 2007, it was announced that Kay Biddle of Rutgers University in New Jersey, along with his colleagues, had been able to extract DNA and bacteria from a sample of ice that was found between 3 and 5 meters beneath the surface of a glacier in Antarctica. The ice was found in the Beacon and Mullins Valley, and the samples were dated to be somewhere from 100,000 to 8 million years old. Once collected, the researchers attempted to resuscitate the organisms, and they found that the younger ones began growing quite quickly, doubling in size every 7 days on average. As for the 8 million year old sample, researchers found only one type of bacterium, which grew at a much slower pace, doubling every 70 days. Through examining the average lengths of the DNA found in the samples, they were able to determine that frozen DNA does degrade over time, and they believe that this happens through cosmic rays, which are definitely the strongest at the poles of the Earth. In our number one spot today, we have the ancient microbe. John Priskew is a Montana State University professor, and he is also spearheading a study into Antarctic microbiology. Through his studies, he has been looking at some of the oldest ice on Earth for what he calls the bugs in the ice sheet. He has been able to find living bacteria in the core of a 420,000 year old ice that he has successfully been able to grow in his lab. He explains that these frozen years for the bacteria is quite a fantastic evolutionary strategy for microorganisms because it essentially just stores them for a later re-entry into the world. He said, quote, it's a way of recycling genomes. You put something on the surface of the ice and millions of years later, it comes back out. Right now with the research, they're trying to figure out out how these bacteria have the ability to live in such extreme cold environments because it's possible that this sort of thing could lead the way to the discovery of life on another planet with extreme climates such as ones that are frozen. Number 10, Scimitar cat bone. Right off the hop, there've only been a few Scimitar cat fossils found in history. 
period. So already, this is a good one, right? We love rare finds. I'm into Pokemon Go, so this is like, oh, a Skimitar cat bone. Nice, add that to the collection. The Homotherium Latidens lives again. Back in 2011, a bone of the beast was found on a Dominion Creek mining site right next to Dawson City in Yukon. Yeah, you wanna make fun of Canadians for living in the cold? Well, joke's on you, pal. We have frozen Skimitar cat bones. Yeah, in your face in your face. Researchers at Copenhagen sequenced its genome and its parents were only distantly related. So this was a rare cat while it was alive, let alone found frozen 47,000 years later in 2011. We love it. Number nine, the oldest ice on the planet. They say you're as cold as ice, but never as old as ice. Let's change that, let's make a new phrase. Why not? Scientists are digging up ice in Antarctica. There's pretty much nothing else to dig up, so obviously. Millions of years of ice hides in there, so there's of course millions of ancient secrets. John Higgins, a geochemist at Princeton, believes that there's five million year old ice still intact, and I wanna lick it. I wanna see what it tastes like, you know what I mean? Just ready to probe. Weird to say that and then immediately the probe thing. Let's, we'll do one or the other. Lick ice and then probe it? I'm like, who is this guy? One group is claiming to have found eight million years old ice, but climatologist Eric Wolf from the University of Cambridge says, my attitude is that I accept that it's old ice. I don't know if it's exactly eight million, but I accept that it's old ice. Yeah, scientists are beefing about Ice Age, not the movies, like the age of the, you get it. There've been way too many of those movies, eh? It's like seven now. Number eight, frozen bird. Back in 2018, an extremely well-preserved bird was found in northeastern Siberia, near the village of Balayagora. The bird itself was quite hidden, which explains its incredible preservation. It was found 150 meters into an ice tunnel, and the fascinating thing here, other than of course, you know, oh my God, a mummified bird, is that it looks like it died a week ago, right? If I found this, I wouldn't look twice, to be honest. I'd be like, ooh, I'm gonna keep walking. You know, one of those? This bird froze 48,000 years ago. It's a long time, he's been dead. RIP, RIP a thousand times, my little dude. Studying the bird's DNA has given researchers insight on the end of the last ice age. We love it, we love new info in the shape of dirty old birds. Nice. Number seven, ice worms. This is the Dune sequel you didn't know you wanted. Here we go. Around 24,000 years ago, these rotifers, or real creatures, or ice worms, they live in freshwater environments. They've been on our planet for millions of years, so it was only a matter of time before they came back to life. Yeah, that's their secret, Cap. They're immortal. Researchers have been studying these little guys for a while, and in the past, they found that modern rotifers could freeze and then come back to life 10 years later. Yeah, a, a microscopic worm with a buzz saw as a mouth can come back to life. The more you know. Hit that thumbs up on most amazing top 10. I'm so scared. A year ago, these ice age worms were found 12 feet deep under permafrost in Siberia's Alizea River. These ones came back to life after 24,000 years. Must be some tuck everlasting water around them or something, I don't know. They're built different. Number six, viruses. Before we get into the mummified mammoth cubs, we gotta talk about some concerning finds, of course. Just over a year ago in China, scientists discovered ancient viruses. These samples came from the Tibetan Plateau and these samples were originally collected back in 2015. The contents, however, they date back to around 14,400 years ago, long before Captain America went into the ice. This is some ancient stuff right here. So dust, gases, and of course viruses over that long accumulate and glaciers just, they just soak it all in layer after layer, just growing, getting bigger and stronger. Well, not necessarily anymore, but you get it. That is until scientists come in with a few mega drills. Now we're finding dinosaurs and it's fascinating. Except for, you know, when you find 33 ancient viruses in the ice. We don't like that. Yeah, 33 viruses. That's like two more than my family computer had growing up. That's a lot of viruses. Four of these viruses typically infect bacteria and the rest were novel, which means that it's never been seen before. How neat is that? Novel viruses. Just what the world needs, right? Oh God. Number five, preserved wolf pup. This little lady went into the ice 57,000 years ago. I bet she had no idea she'd ever see the sun again until now. Here we go. Discovered in Yukon, Canada, Zur is the most complete wolf mummy that has ever been found in history, ever. She's incredibly intact. She was discovered in 2016 by a gold miner while they were blasting water at frozen mud. They thought it was treasure, but really it was just this little shiny lady instead. She's quite old to us, but when she went into to the ice, x-rays tell us she was only six weeks old. It's pretty sad. X-rays also show that she loved fish. She had a belly full of fish. She was eating good until she froze. Sad. 
Number four, underneath Thwaites Glacier. We've seen some fascinating stuff here on Most Amazing Top 10, specifically underwater footage. I can't do that, but they love giving me those lists. I get nice and anxious doing those ones. This is footage from the bottom of an Antarctic glacier. This is incredible. This is something we shouldn't have been able to see in our lifetime. This glacier is the size of Florida, okay? So if it collapses, our sea levels could rise 10 feet. So yeah, let's drill a hole through the middle and see what happens. We love it, all in the name of science. This was back in 2019. Researchers drilled 2,300 feet through the Thwaites Glader and dropped a robot with a camera down. This is the first time in history we've seen the grounding zone of Thwaites Glacier. Lead scientist Brittany Schmidt says this project is a dream come true. It's her walking on the moon moment. There's only one meter of space between the bottom of the glacier and the rocky seafloor. So you're seeing the bottom of a continent, basically, like in Smash Bros, the very bottom of that floating arena. That's it, right here, underwater. I'm so scared. I feel so small looking at this. Would you swim underneath it, Chris? No, I wouldn't either. I would do this and then go back through that. Hey, yo, it's deep too and it's like, Literally like it's like a triangle at the bottom and it's like the you see the ocean floor is like right there I'm like this is actually really scary. It gets my heart going. I can't do this I'm afraid of lakes and fish and ghosts. Number three, Europa Cryobot. We've talked about Jupiter's moon on this channel often for some reason. Apparently there's a lot of going on up there. But now we found traces of water on the icy shell of the moon, which is fascinating in general because water in space, I mean, hello, have you seen Alien or Aliens or any movie in space? The part that really has NASA's attention here is the tectonic activity beneath the icy shell, meaning that somewhere in the middle, there could be warm water flowing. Yeah, there's a spa. You could just flow. There's a lazy river on this moon. We love it. One of the only ways to get under that thick shell of ice and find out what's really going on is Valkyrie. Yeah, not the superhero from Thor. She's a cryobot that NASA created specifically for this mission. Yeah, a little pricey, but she's doing the trick. This machine is capable of melting through layers and layers of ice. A prototype was tested recently in Alaska and the results were promising because, you know, it, was, it worked. So yeah. This cryobot is capable of crawling through eight kilometers of ice a year. So while we do tests here on Earth, we're just gonna keep finding more fascinating mummies or disgusting, scary things like viruses. <laughs> one of the two, it's science, hey, we're doing our best. Number two, Project Ice Worm. This one has no actual worms in it, just so you know, that was the gross one up there. This is more of a government one, here we go. As a Canadian, this secret project sounds like the worst one on this list. Ah, oh, it's so cold, I'm sick of the cold. Had it. Back in the 1960s, under the Greenland ice sheet, the US Army started to build mobile nuclear missile launch sites. Yeah, code name was Project Iceworm. And now we're still finding a whole bunch of gadgets and bad stuff there. So it's, they didn't do a great job cleaning up. The idea here with the project is that they would be close enough they could hit targets within the Soviet Union, right? That was the whole point. This project was called Project Iceworm, but there was also another project, a little secret one, called Camp Sentry. This one had to be done first. Camp Sentry was a network of underground tunnels and places for workers to stay, like a kitchen, a hall, supply rooms, communication centers, all good stuff like that. There was also a nuclear power plant, and this was kept from the Danish government for seven years. So yeah, some secret nuclear activity. We always gotta talk about that on Most Amazing Top 10. Back in 1966, the project was canceled because of shifting ice. Or was it? There's still some activity going on over there. No one knows what's up. Thought I'd get that in your ear before we do our big bad number one. Here we go. And finally, coming in at number one, preserved mammoth cub. In 2010, a mummified mammoth cub was discovered in Siberia, right off the coast of Oyogos. Named after a nearby village, Yuka, the newfound cub is now the best preserved mammoth discovered in history. This was a fascinating find that should have never been seen again, let alone seen in such great condition. Guy looks like he was in Ice Age, like the movie Ice Age. He looks great. But that's not the end for the woolly mammoth. No, it was announced only months ago that a team of scientists and entrepreneurs over at a company called Colossal are planning to bring the Colossal Woolly Mammoth back to life. Here we go. Imagine driving and you see one of these crossing the street. You're like, I guess we'll wait. The last mammoth to walk on the planet was alive around 10,500 years ago. But what if they were alive today? What's the whole point, right? Why are we doing this? Colossal raised over $15 million and they're now working on reviving the woolly mammoth to ideally decelerate the melting of the Arctic permafrost and to ideally save modern elephants from extinction. And of course, to advance CRISPR editing because you know, we can, why not? Hey, let's bring this back to life because CRISPR editing, the classic CRISPR. Kicking off the list at number 10, Arctic hyenas. Only a few years ago, scientists discovered teeth. Yeah, how fun is that? Ancient teeth from Arctic hyenas, lovely. Now, when you think of hyenas, you would never imagine that they once roamed over Europe and Asia five million years ago, right? That's not what we think about when we imagine them scary and drooling in our brains. Remains from these Arctic beasts have been found all over the world, not just the Yukon permafrost. Evolutionary biologist Jackson 
studies prehistoric carnivores and he knew within minutes that these recent Yukon molars belonged to Arctic hyenas, aka Chasmoporthetes. Number nine, frozen treasure. As far as frozen treasure goes, this is a very recent discovery. We don't find these often or ever as a matter of fact. Yeah, treasure frozen in ice. This sounds like something from Ocarina of Time. I'm so excited. Back in 2013, an anonymous mountain climber, can't imagine why they chose to stay hidden, they stumbled across a box filled with jewels jammed in the ice. Yeah, hear what I just said, a box of jewels in ice. They had to like breathe on it a bit, <sighs> melt it up, and then finally pull it out. But alas, once they reported it to the French officers, this box contained around 100 precious gems. Precious gems. This was quite the find. Emeralds, sapphires, rupees, you name it. The box was worth 300,000 US dollars, roughly. I find a 20 on the ground, I'm calling in sick. Game over. Where did this treasure come from? Well, since it was discovered on Mont Blanc, officials were able to trace the lost gems back to an Air India flight that crashed on the mountain back in 1966. The lives of 117 passengers were sadly lost and because of the conditions, it's been next to impossible to recover anything from the mountain, especially that long ago, right? Somehow these family gems were able to see the light again. And yes, before you even ask, the owner did return the gems. Only the thing is, two families claim the goods, so. Someone's not telling their truth, my friend. Someone's lying, that, that means lying, right? I never knew what that meant. I don't know, I saw someone do it and I was like, I like that sound. Interestingly enough, in 2014, a French treasure hunter named Daniel Roche found 50 more pieces of jewelry from the same glacier. So yeah, the world's melting, but we're also finding gold, so. Eh. Number eight, Western camel bones. Scientific name being Camelops hesternus. <laughs> it's a Harry Potter spell, turns into a camel. Camelops hesternus. Meaning, yesterday's camel in Latin, these bones first appeared in 2008 when gold miners were working in Hunter Creek, just 60 miles away from the Alaskan border, when they suddenly stumbled across these massive bones. The last time these bones were operating, I guess attached to some meat, was 75 to 125,000 years ago. The remains were in such great condition because of the awful surrounding conditions, right? It was so cold that scientists could still extract DNA. And that DNA told us that 10 million years ago, roughly, Western camels split from modern day camels. They were like, hey, it's not working out. You got the two hump thing, I got the one hump. It's cold, you're hot, I don't know. I never called the imaginary camel hot, but here we are. That thumbs up for hot camels. Number seven, blood red waterfalls. I'm sure you've seen this at some point, so I have to of course mention in a part two. If I came across this in the wild, I would be quite alarmed. I would ask some questions as well. On the southern side of our planet, there's a waterfall in Antarctica that is blood red. The edge of Taylor Glacier houses this one of a kind waterfall. It pours right into Lake Bonnie. Now, millions of years ago when sea levels rose up, glaciers formed at the top of said lake. So this melting water that's slowly leaking out from, you know, a quarter mile deep, this water is three times saltier and apparently three times scarier. When the iron rich water reaches the air, it looks bloody, therefore scary. I'll put my hands back down now, let's move on. Number six, giant beaver skull. So the Yukon permafrost, it's a hot spot. Ironically, it seems, for fossils. Lots of ancient animals stuck in time and in great condition, luckily for us. Scientific name for this one is Castroides ohianus. Sure. That sounded like the closest it'll ever be. This giant beaver was on average larger than us humans. They were massive. As Jurassic Park as this thing looks, it only ate pondweeds, which is pretty hilarious. You would think otherwise looking at it, right? One of the largest rodents in history, and they were probably just really cute, and they ate little plants. 50,000 years ago, they didn't chomp on trees, just weeds. Nice, we like that. Go eat all the weeds. I hate when they touch my feet when I'm swimming in lakes. Like others on this list, they eventually moved north. They followed the ideal conditions to survive in, and that led them ultimately to their icy grave that is now the Yukon permafrost, where we go, Wow, more teeth. Number five, Antarctica Pyramid. Over on our history channel, Bumblebee, I talk about the pyramids of Egypt a lot. Maybe a little too much. Once I heard about pyramids in Antarctica, I had to know what was going on. Back in 2016, a mountain in Antarctica was trending online. And we all immediately thought that it was evidence of an ancient civilization because that's what we want to see, right? That's what we're all waiting for. We're like, James Webb, please show us something scary. Eric Rignot, a professor of Earth System Sciences at the University of California, reached out to live science when this was all unfolding, adding that, quote, pyramid shapes are not impossible. Many peaks partially look like pyramids, but they only have one or two faces like that. 
rarely four. Yeah, that's all it is, just a natural pyramid. Or maybe it's aliens, who knows? I'm leaning towards the latter of the two. Number four, 90 million year old rainforest. Back in 2020, while we were all catching up on Ozark, disappointing finale, fossil traces in West Antarctica were found. Now this time it wasn't a giant beaver or a bloody waterfall from back in time, I don't know. This time it was kinda nice. This time it was an ancient rainforest. 90 million years ago when dinosaurs were once walking around, Antarctica was once a paradise. Right, what a sight to see. Researchers compare Antarctica in the Cretaceous period to New Zealand today, right? It was hot, it was gorgeous, with most days on an average of 12 degrees Celsius, like Seattle, right? Some hot days and then some Seattle days. I love how scientists compare eras with modern day city temperatures. Oh, the Ice Age? Oh, a lot of Regina energy there. Yeah, a lot of Western Canada, very cold, not ideal for dinosaurs. But apparently it was a paradise, so we missed out. So cold. Number three, meteorite. For this one, we're gonna switch it up, right? Taylor McWaters, I like to jazz it up every now and then. This time, scientists found ice in a meteorite, not rock and ice. A little flip flip. That's always a good time. James Webb is about to show us how much water is in space and personally, I'm not ready for it. Back in 1990, the actor 094 meteorite was discovered in the Algerian mountains. The rock was dated back to 4.6 billion years ago. So scientists studied the meteorite with synchrotron radiation based x-ray nanotomography. That sentence was choppy because I couldn't say it all in one go, obviously. This led scientists to find evidence of tiny pores. Pores believed to have been fossilized ice crystals. Now these pores may have come from when the meteorite crossed this snow line out in space. The snow line is a sphere around the sun and it's the exact point where ice on meteorites melts, right? That's the snow line, the more you know. This study was to hopefully find out where water comes from in the galaxy, and it seems that it came from a lot further than we all thought. I got goosebumps saying that, I didn't like that. James Webb stuff today, I'm like, oh, we're so small. Number two, Grasshopper Glacier. Yeah, if you're not a fan of bugs, you can go ahead and skip to number one. I won't take it personally. I'll save some bits for that one too. A glacier in Montana is home to many grasshoppers and locusts. Yeah, locusts, that's a fun word. Imagine heading to a glacier and you forget bug spray. Ah, what a fool you are. Appropriately named Grasshopper Glacier, the mile-long glacier near Crook City holds the remains of extinct grasshoppers. Yeah, they're not alive, don't worry. They're just frozen and then stuck looking at you like this. That's better. These poor guys were traveling to find new life and they must have got caught up in a blizzard long time ago. Now they're stuck here for another few hundred years. This reminds me of those suckers that have a gross bug in the center, you know? It's like a bug. Why do people buy those? I would never buy them, that's so gross. Number one, fish eat fish. If you know anything about me is that I'm not a fan of lakes. Not at all, no. Oceans, sure, if I can see my feet, we're grooving, okay, we're laughing. If I'm looking down in goggles and I can't see shit, I'm out of the lake. I don't even strap them on my head, I just put my eyes in them and rest them on the water. This video went viral not too long ago and it, it's very real. These two brothers were fishing on Indiana's Wawasee Lake and they saw a pike eating a bass, only both parties were completely still. Both parties were already dead. Both were completely frozen. How epic. What happened? How did this, how are they stuck like this? They posted the photo originally and nobody believed that it was real. So they had to follow up and post a video where they actually removed this scene of events from the ice. Yeah, I would think this is fake too. This looks like a life lesson somewhere that has to be told. It's a fish eating a fish frozen, you know? There's bigger fish out there. There's smaller fish out there. Sometimes fish freeze. I don't know, I'll do like nine more. I don't know what the message is. Number 10, abandoned whiskey. All right, here we go. Part one and two of this list was pretty dark. So we'll kick this part three off with 10 year old McKinley whiskey. An explorer found the crates in the hut of Ernest Shackleton. Inside were these frozen bottles of scotch all the way from 1907. This may be the best discovery on this list, but it's been locked up of course, obviously, such a historical find. But you'll be happy to know a sample was given to Scottish distiller White and McKay. Yeah, they're currently studying this recipe to try and bring it back to life. Imagine seeing Ernest Shackleton's whiskey in stores on shelves. I'd be like, oh, what? Okay, debit. Number nine, surgical notebook. Whenever explorers find notebooks, I'm so interested right off the bat. Maybe I've played too much Zelda, I don't know, but notebooks feel very national treasure to me when you find them. This notebook here once belonged to a surgeon, believe it or not. It's over 100 years old and it was found in a frozen hut in Antarctica and the owner was George Levick. 
He was a photographer and of course a surgeon who traveled with the last expedition of Robert Scott. This expedition was from 1910 to 1913. Now the book itself was completely frozen and the bindings were completely toast, but the parts that they can read today is pretty historical. You can still read descriptions of photos that George took at Cape Adair. Like his first observation, all those notes that he took down, we can still read those, so it's amazing. Imagine in 100 years you find a notebook and it's just a bunch of like crazy S's that we used to draw back in school. Like those pointy, like one of these, hang on. <laughs> this is Disney Channel, the guy would be like, he nailed it, that was perfect. Number eight, the Glacier Girl. Before you get worried, this next one is a plane, not a woman. I got you back. A P-23 aircraft was discovered in Greenland surrounded in ice. Now this was during World War II in July 1946, when six P-38 fighter planes were ordered to make an emergency landing in Greenland due to, you know, lousy weather conditions and of course, low visibility. The crew was saved, but the lockhead had to be abandoned, sadly. Never to be seen again for 50 years. It was then dug out of 264 feet of snow and ice, and it took years to finally get this plane back in action. She's known as the Glacier Girl, and in 2007, Lewis Energy CEO, Rodney Lewis, bought the plane. Number seven, million year old plant. Back in 2019 in, of course, Greenland, a preserved fossil of a million year old plant was discovered. We love it. This was under the ice near a secret Cold War military camp. Yeah, an ancient flower found at a Cold War military camp. What a headline that would be. In 1959, Project Iceworm was underway. Now, I mentioned that project on this channel here before, and that in itself is a pretty bizarre frozen adventure in history, okay? Eventually, the project was scrapped and it was abandoned. Now, cut to 2019, it was rediscovered, and scientists at the University of Vermont found parts of a million-year-old flower. Not what you'd expect to find under a secret Cold War base, you know? He's like, oh, it's, uh, oh, it's kind of nice. The fragments were all so well preserved that it looked like the flower had died recently. Not, you know, a million years ago. Setting these plants can also provide clues on our future and where our current plants might end up. Number six. Three Inca mummies. Discovered by John Reinhardt on March 16, 1999, near the summit of La Lilico, so around 7,000 meters up in the sky. This is near Argentina and Chile borders. This is far away. Further studies found that they were most likely sacrificed all in the name of a religious Inca ritual around the year 1500. Yeah, so quite a while ago. They were found in a small opening less than two meters deep under the ground, so again, this discovery was shocking. They looked like they were just asleep, but in reality, they died sometime around the 1500s. They're some of the most well-preserved mummies in the world. They now rest at an exhibition at the Museum of High Altitude Archaeology in Salta, Argentina. So specific, Museum of High Altitude Archaeology. Number five, Allen Hill's Meteorite. Okay, this next one is literally out of this world, so buckle up. Back in December 1984, American meteor hunters discovered this fragment in Allen Hills, Antarctica. The meteor was appropriately named Allen Hills 84001, and this rock was speculated to come from Mars. And in 1996, a scientist claimed that he discovered bacteria from the microscopic fossils on the meteorite. Now this news of course spread very quickly, and everybody started losing their goddamn minds. Bill Clinton even chimed in. He made a speech about possible discoveries in space, right? Everyone's freaking out. Could this be aliens? Yeah. Yeah, the scientific community later said this was not the case after further studies, but hey, never say never. Feels like we're closer to finding life with James Webb right now, honestly. I'm, I'm afraid to hit refresh. It's like, here's 700 galaxies. You don't matter. I'm like, thanks, James. We love it. Keep snapping those pics. Number four, Atsi the Iceman. Discovered in September 1991, this mummy was found on the border of Austria and Italy. He's Europe's oldest known natural mummy. Most of the 45-year-old man from the Copper Age was left in rather great condition, surprisingly. A 5,000-year-old man was found in ice, so I hate to say this, but you lose this round, Captain America. I see you in the comments. I'm sorry, I had to, I had to get you out of here one day. Before he passed away in the Italian Alps, Otzi had a number of health problems. He had arthritis, Lyme disease, he was lactose intolerant, which is just horrible. Thanks to science, we now know that Otzi, the Iceman, was sharpening his tools right before his untimely death. So he fought until the end. Number three, three kittens. Don't worry, they are all okay. Spoiler alert. I had to throw that in because, you know, I care about you. Back in 2020, an oil worker named Drayton Dewish found three kittens all frozen to the ground near Drayton Valley. Now, it was mid-January, everything is frozen. This was near an oil well that he'd been working at. On Facebook, they posted about how the three kittens were all males and they were all dewormed, and now they were all living under the same roof, much warmer with a happy family. So, happy ending, there we go. He got them out of the ice by using coffee to melt the ice. 
How amazing is that? I've said it before and I'll say it again. Coffee saves lives. That's it, double doubles. Ooh, every morning. I was frozen outside before and then I was dethawed myself with a nice French vanilla. Number two, message in a frozen bottle. Okay, here we go. Now that song, Message in a Bottle, is gonna be stuck in everyone's head watching this. Best song from Guitar Hero 2, hands down. That and Surrender by Cheap Trick. What a time, right? So fun. Anyways, back in 1959, back on track, a geologist named Paul Walker, great name, buried a message in a bottle. He wanted to make a lasting statement about climate change, so he put this frozen message underneath rocks near a glacier in 1959. And then cut to 2013, what do we find? Said, message in a bottle. The message inside was to measure the length from that point to the edge of a glacier, but by 2013, said glacier had shrunk down 200 feet. So the scientist really did show us. He was like, eh, hey, trust me, in 50 years, I'm gonna get you with this. Imagine he put the wrong note in. They open it up, it just says milk, eggs, bread. Is this a grocery list? This is definitely a grocery list. God damn it. Number one, ice age art. Ancient artwork, this time from the Colombian Amazon. Thing is, unlike other drawings found in the ceilings of tombs, this canvas stretched about eight miles and it was all frozen. It was just a wasteland. This should have never been found. The paintings are even more impressive. They date back to 12,000 years ago. These were made near the end of the last ice age. Yeah, the end of the last ice age, we're doing doodles. Are you kidding me? I can't even go to the store if it's snowing out. I'm like, nah, I'm just gonna order in, screw that. This guy's making art. Miles of art. These were found in 2017, but it was only last year where they went public with said findings. Those findings being paintings of elephants, massive sloths, horses from the Ice Age, snakes, birds, deer, etc. This is now one of the largest collections of rock art in South America. Yeah, is it pregnant women or the origins of the Ninja Turtles? Art, we don't know, couldn't tell you. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Molly virus. Back in 2015, French researchers discovered a gigantic virus that they found in a sample of Siberian permafrost. This spherical DNA virus wasn't just any old virus. No, this one was about 30,000 years old. For the virus to survive that long, frozen in ice truly is remarkable and also absolutely terrifying. There is good news, however, it is said that although some refer to this virus as a behemoth, it is said that the new discovery only infects amoebas, which means that it is unlikely to ravage the planet anytime soon. At least we hope. In our number nine spot today, we have Lake Vostok. Many of us have heard of Atlantis, but have you heard of Lake Vostok? This lake is located in Antarctica and it is so huge, it's one of the largest lakes in the entire world. The lake not only has a large surface area, but it's also quite deep, which only adds to the volume of the lake. It's like the lakiest lake out there, and here's the thing about it. It is covered by ice, and not just any ice, but the East Antarctic Ice Sheet, which is just the largest ice sheet in the world. This subglacial lake has ice so thick that we don't really know a lot about what lies beneath it, and the ice has been there for millions of years. But when the first samples of the actual lake water were taken, it became apparent that there may be species in the lake that we know absolutely nothing about. In our number eight spot today, we have the female mummy. Back in 2017, there was a mummy found in Siberia that absolutely rocked the scientific community. This discovery was so remarkable because deep within the permafrost, close to the Arctic Circle, they found the mummified remains of a woman who was roughly 900 years old. Said to have come from the medieval times, this marked the first woman to be discovered in that area, as previously it had been mostly men. It appears as though the mummification part was accidental, but it was quite a surprise to researchers who had thought that they wouldn't find a woman's remains in the area at all. It is said that all of the bodies found in this area belonged to a hunting and fishing civilization, and this discovery gave experts very valuable insight into their lives and the times in which they lived. In our number seven spot today, we have Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus is the highest active volcano in Antarctica, as well as the southernmost active volcano on Earth. Got a lot going on. The volcano has been active for 1.3 million years, and it features a lava lake in the inner summit crater that's been present since the early 1970s. You might be thinking, uh, it's a volcano, which surely is like the opposite of ice, right? But as it turns out, this volcano is like the definition of fire and ice. Here you can be sure to find numerous ice fumaroles, which are ice towers that form around the gases that are released or that escape from the vents on the surface. This creates a perfect home, not for many, but for some persevering and adaptable bacteria and fungi. This gives scientists quite the opportunity to study these organisms that can live in this extreme environment that doesn't really provide a lot of resources. In our number six spot today, we have the Iceman. The mummy of Otzi, who is also referred 
referred to as the Iceman was found in 1991 in the Otsal Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otzi lived around 3000 BC and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post-mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Otzi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing, the people who helped with the discovery of Otzi are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean it is said that there were 7 deaths in one year alone, so if there is a curse, it's clearly a pretty strong one. It's almost as if disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea that anyone's ever had. In our number 5 spot today we have Europa. We are going off planet for this one. One of Jupiter's moons, called Europa, has a red tinge to it, and in 2001 NASA scientists revealed that it's possible that alien microbes might be responsible for this red color. The surface of this moon is mostly ice, but it has been shown that it reflects infrared radiation in a really bizarre way. This means that something is binding it together, but researchers haven't been able to come up with the correct combination of elements and compounds to make the data make sense. There are some bacteria on Earth that can thrive in extreme conditions that also have that red and brown color which could potentially be responsible for the color on this moon. The surface temperature might be too cold for them to survive, but the warmer interior might be where they are located. Some geological activity on the moon could then push them closer to the surface where they are then flash frozen in place. In our number 4 spot today we have P38. In 2018, a team of researchers were using a drone with ground penetrating radar technology when they found something that no one could have predicted. 300 feet deep in the Greenland ground encased in ice was a World War II plane. This P-38 lightning fighter plane is actually just one out of eight that were a squadron. This P-38 lightning fighter plane was actually just one out of eight that were part of a squadron. This group had all been lost and had crash landings after a blizzard on July 15th, 1942. After locating the fighter plane, researchers were able to then excavate it, but there still remains at least four in this squadron that have yet to be located. In our number three spot today, we have Skeleton Lake. Also sometimes referred to as Mystery Lake, this place is exactly what it sounds like. It's a lake and there's a bunch of skeletons there. Located in the Himalayas, this lake freezes over in the winter months, but when the snow melts, there are various skeletons around the site that become visible around the edges of the lake. There have been many speculations as to how these people died, and at one point it was thought that these remains were a result of a pretty legendary event where all in a single group they were killed by a large and violent hailstorm, but the leading theory has since changed. Now it is said that the remains actually belong to three distinctly different groups who all died in separate events. At this point the real story of what happened here may just remain a mystery that has left us with a haunting image. In our number 2 spot today we have Luba. This is the name that was given to a baby mammoth. Mummified remains were found frozen and extremely well preserved in ice. Luba would have roamed the earth about 48,000 years ago which is truly incredible to think about. These mammoth remains were found in 2007 but it was actually a complete accident. The remains were found by a hunter who was out on a frozen peninsula in Russia. But here's where the story takes a bit of a crazy turn. So the man who discovered these remains didn't want to touch her because of a cultural belief that touching a mammoth would cause a bad omen, so he traveled to a nearby town to consult a friend and this is when they decided to contact the authorities. The authorities then flew out to the area to collect the remains, but when they arrived, she had disappeared. The person who found her knew that someone had likely taken her to try and turn a profit, so he began doing some investigations. Long story short, they found the remains outside of a local store and this is when it was revealed to them that the guy who had found the remains initially, his cousin had stolen them and brought them here in exchange for two snowmobiles. In the end, there was unfortunately minor damage to the body that included dogs having chewed off her right ear, but still the find and discovery was still incredible and she was transported to a museum where she continues to give people a look into a time on earth long ago. In our number one spot today we have the Incan mummy. 20,000 feet above sea level on the edge of a volcano, researchers were startled to find a woman frozen in ice. This Incan mummy is said to have been so well preserved that she even still had lice in her hair. The researchers and doctors who examined her after her discovery were completely baffled at how well preserved she was, so much so that some of her features reminded them of a living, breathing human being. Even down to the extremities, it truly was just remarkable. It is believed that this woman likely met her fate where she was found as a result of sacrifice. Because of her well preserved nature, scientists were able to determine that she was suffering from quite a few ailments, including tuberculosis, which some believe is the reason why she was sacrificed. Starting us off at number 10, we have frozen bones. One of the most terrifying things that can be found 
buried in ice has to be human bones. I mean, it's one thing to find a mummy, which is still spooky, but at least they are usually placed there on purpose. These bones, however, have a little more mystery behind them. Back in 1942, a forest guard was out patrolling near the Himalayas when he stumbled across thousands of human bones where the frozen lake had thawed. It was a terrifying sight to say the least, and at first, many speculated the remains to belong to the deceased Japanese soldiers of World War II. However, it was discovered the remains dated back much earlier than that. These remains actually dated back to 850 AD, but the cause of death was still very much up for debate. According to an urban legend, the men were celebrating and their celebration disturbed a deity, who then sent hail down on the men ending their celebration and their lives. And while there might be a bit more fiction than fact to that story, happening upon a slew of random creepy bones that were left buried under a frozen lake is still a pretty scary afternoon. Coming in at number nine, mysterious images. In 2013, a group of conservationists were reconstructing huts in the Arctic when they ran across a lockbox frozen in a block of ice. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I were to come across a locked box frozen in a block of ice, I would probably take a moment and think before before I opened it, as I'm pretty sure that is how every horror movie with an evil curse starts. But thankfully, inside this box was just a few black and white photos. That being said, however, the photos themselves were not completely innocent. Once the images were formatted to be visible, they realized they had come from Ernest Shackleton's 1914 expedition, and the photos depicted several nerve wracking moments from the trip, including their ship stuck and sinking in the ice. Hopefully, there wasn't anything more sinister locked inside that box with them. Next up at number eight, alien markings. Now it wouldn't be a scary top 10 video without a little sprinkle of alien conspiracy, now would it? So let me know what you guys think of this one, will you? Apparently two friends were walking along a frozen lake in Utah and made a strange discovery when they came across a strange formation. According to the friends, small holes could be seen poking out from the ice along with an odd formation lying underneath. Now, they speculated that it was some kind of debris left behind by aliens visiting the planet, while others online think it could have been a designated UFO landing spot. But the strangest theory is that they are alien eggs that were planted on the surface of the ice, which if I'm understanding correctly, would mean aliens are trying to overtake the planet by secretly implanting eggs in the ice. According to skeptics, this strange sighting could also be spilt coffee, salt that was used for ice fishing, or most plainly, a natural ice formation. So what do you think? Is it a secret alien egg farm, or just people losing their minds? Coming in at number seven, an ancient virus. It's not every day you think you're gonna find a prehistoric virus buried 100 feet deep in Arctic permafrost, but back in 2014, in the depths of icy Siberia, two researchers did exactly that. The ancient virus, named pithovirus, is believed to date back 30,000 years and has remained completely untouched in its hibernation, but still completely active and capable of infecting amoeba. According to people much smarter than me, it's apparently a giant virus containing 500 genes, which is insane considering HIV only contains 12. However, there is no need to start panicking just yet. Luckily, experts believe it is very difficult to actually be infected by this virus as a human, although technically it wouldn't be impossible. Good thing I'm not planning on visiting Siberia anytime soon. Coming in at number six, a message in a bottle. Now, this one is frankly as depressing as it is scary, but terrifying discoveries come in all kinds of ways. So back in 1959, before the reality of melting glaciers and the climate crisis were fully understood or even really believed, a geologist by the name of Paul T. Walker decided to take matters into his own hands. He decided to put a note in a bottle instructing the finder to measure the 
distance from the bottle to the edge of the glacier and buried it in the frozen area. Fast forward to 2013 and two researchers uncovered this bottle encased in ice and decided to follow the directions Walker had left behind. Disturbingly, their findings revealed that the glacier had retracted over 200 feet since Walker wrote his note 54 years prior, proving the reality that so many wished was not true. Now, it's been 10 years since the 2013 discovery, and I worry how much it's moved since then. So yeah, scary in the sense that our Earth is melting at an insanely fast rate, and people still don't think the climate crisis should be a concern. Coming in at number five, HMS Terror. You may or may not have heard of Sir John Franklin, the 19th century naval commander who set out to find the Northwest Passage. Either way, unlike some of the explorers of his time, he was actually incredibly prepared. The famous HMS Terror ship was a converted bomb vessel that had survived the War of 1812, and upon his Arctic expedition, he decided to reinforce the ship with iron plating to crush the thick layers of ice. From there, he stocked up with three years of food, and Sir Franklin and his 134 crew members boarded two ships and set sail. However, despite their best efforts, they were no match for the harsh conditions. The ship was lost to the Arctic, and its whereabouts remained a complete mystery. That was until August of 2016, when members of Arctic Research Foundation on their own expedition found the ship preserved under the ice. Now, the horrifying part comes when historians were able to piece together what their last days on the vessel could have looked like. Assumed to have been trapped by the ice for over a year and a half, the crew was dropping like flies, including their captain. The remaining survivors decided to abandon the ship and take their chances on foot, planning to reach a remote fur trading outpost several hundred miles away. But with no food, water, or resources left, the crew was left with but one thing to keep them alive, each other's flesh. There were no survivors, but many bodies remained mummified from the permafrost, allowing historians to learn about what really happened on the infamous HMS terror. Coming in at number four, a woman. Speaking of terrifying human remains found buried in the deep glacial ice, I have yet another mummy to add to our list of spooky finds. However, this one has a few extra creepy details. Discovered over 20,000 feet above sea level on the edge of a volcano was the mummy of an Incan teenager accompanied by what can be assumed was the rest of her young family. And creepily, it's said she was so well preserved that she still had lice in her hair. Now, due to her incredible preservation, there were several interesting things that researchers were able to confirm. She suffered from tuberculosis, for example, and it was found she had been regularly eating coca leaves as well as copious amounts of alcohol prior to her death. But interestingly, that's not what killed her. It's assumed that 500 years ago, she and the others were given the drugs and alcohol to make them more compliant in the ritual that ultimately ended their lives. And evidence suggests that she was sacrificed to the volcano in a traditional practice. Practice. Now, while part of this is cool, historically speaking, it's also a bit terrifying, as you never know what kind of ancient curse could have been unearthed along with her. Coming in at number three, a deadly virus. It's not just an ancient virus that has been found hiding in the frost. Back in 2016, due to the rising temperatures in the Arctic, the usually frozen ground was beginning to thaw. Initially, though, no one thought much of it, but what ended up happening was an animal anthrax outbreak that killed one person and hospitalized 72. The cause? Well, apparently the local groundwater became contaminated by thawing deer cadavers who had once died from the infection. However, the most terrifying part of this is the precedent it sets for the future. Because of the cold temperatures in the Arctic, many viruses can stay perfectly preserved in the bloodstream, as was discovered in 1918 when six young men who had died from the Spanish flu were found with the active virus in their blood. So as the earth heats, there's worry that the buried bodies from deadly diseases like smallpox could begin to infect the living if the temperatures continue to rise 
surprise, melting the frozen graves. Coming in at number two, a secret military base. In October of 2016, Russian scientists uncovered something truly shocking. It turns out back in World War II, he who shall not be named and his band of military followers built a secret military base in the depths of the Russian Icelands soon after their invasion of Russia. Located on Alexandra land, it is not known for sure exactly what the purpose of the bunker was. Some believe it was to learn about and become acquainted with the harsh weather conditions to be able to better attack when the time came, though some believe the leader sought out ancient relics he believed would give him great power. Upon its 2016 discovery, 500 different artifacts were found, including old weapons and documents pertaining to World War II. As with just about all frozen discoveries, the artifacts remained in excellent condition due to the extremely low temperatures. But that doesn't make this super secret war bunker any less creepy. For all we know, it could be haunted by the terrifying soldiers who once occupied it. And last up today in our number one spot, Otzi the Iceman. Discovered in 1991 by two German hikers in the Oetzel Apps, Otzi is an incredibly well-preserved mummy of a man dating back to around 3300 BC. Now, are mummies inherently cursed and evil? No, but am I ever surprised when one turns out to be? Also, no. Apparently after the Iceman's discovery in 1991, the forensic scientist on the case, Rainer Hen, who also happened to be the first scientist to touch the cursed mummy, died in 19 1992 en route to a conference where he was planning to report his findings. Shortly after, one of the mountaineers who helped Dr. Hen to reach Otzi's remains died when a large rock fell and blew into his skull. Plus, the journalist who filmed Otzi's extraction ended up dying of a brain tumor. And it only gets worse from there. One of the hikers that originally discovered the mummy, Helmut Simon, disappeared for some time, only to be found at the base of a 300-foot cliff and the man who found his corpse died while attending his funeral. Plus, Conrad Spindler, who was at the time the leading expert on the Iceman, went on record claiming that the curse was a hoax and that if it were true, he would be the next one to die, only to be found dead days later. Later. Lastly, one of the other scientists who discovered too much about Otzi was found dead in his home with no reasonable explanation for his passing. So, after seven deaths from people that either knew too much about Otzi or questioned the curse, I can safely say I never want to see this mummy as long as I live. Mm -hmm.